drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video I'm going to share a customizable recipe template that will allow you to quickly and easily create your own beer recipes as an ideal starting point. This template not only makes for a very universal but nice and easy drinking beer, but it is also a great template to use when you are looking to test new ingredients, be it yeast, hops or grain. I will be explaining the full process from start to finish in the hope that this will be easy to follow for all brewers of all experience levels. So let's get started. Let's start by looking at the grain bill. The grain bill shared is one that will lend itself very well in fact to many types of yeast and hops. In the background I will start gradually adding this grain bill into my brewing system here and will start mashing while I talk to you about the grain bill used in this customizable recipe. This grain bill consists of 47.5% pale ale malt and the same of pilsner malt. The remaining 5% is crystal malt. Both the pale ale and pilsner malts will be there in balance to provide the bulk of our fermentables and to create an interesting background and a canvas for our flavours. This may seem simple, and frankly it is, but this is certainly something that works really well at being very universal. In the case of all grain recipes, very often less is actually more, as the known saying goes. Our crystal malt is there to add in colour, plus some body and head retention, plus in some cases flavour. For this example recipe I have chosen to go with an ABV of less than 5%, however this grain bill will serve you well for a large variety of different levels of alcohol from low to high. So you can certainly tweak this to whichever level you wish within brewing software. My example recipe is shared in this video's description area which is found between the video and the comment sections when you look at YouTube on a web browser. The recipe is shown there in full and there is also a link there to the recipe on Brewfather. For at least the very first time that you brew within this recipe template I suggest that you leave this grain bill as is ratios wise so that your taste buds can understand what it offers. These ratios also work great for testing new ingredients too. Past this point you can then add in, if you wish, some variations to this grain bill so that you can experiment with other types of grain and experience their effects to further your knowledge and recipe writing skills. I would suggest at first only changing the base malts. Right now, base malt wise, we are splitting between pale ale and pilsner to offer an interesting balance that will suit many types of hops and yeast. But you could at first try switching out pale ale with another similar base, like Morris Otter or Golden Promise. Or perhaps change the pilsner malt to one that is floor malted, at least at first, keeping the ratios the same as well as your hops and yeast schedules. After this you could simply make the entire base malt of one type and then experience this effect too. This kind of experimentation is done usually with small batches and it is good to keep some of these batches and label them effectively so that when it comes to taste comparisons later on you will really be able to see what the differences are and this will certainly boost your knowledge. You will find that there is simply a huge amount of different combinations just here in playing with base malts and also having some great beers at the same time. Very often I find that people are very much blown away by simply how good these simple beers can be. After you have built up experience with base malts then I suggest you move on to speciality malt and adjuncts that can offer extra flavours and effects for you to experiment with. Perhaps do this with a base malt or combination of base malts that you have preferred from your experiences so far with what you have in mind and would like to test. Some great common examples are now shown on screen but this is far from a complete list but certainly some greats to begin with. A very good starting point here would be to find out which you can easily obtain preferably from your local homebrew store. You can then note these along with the brand of Maltster and you can then check online with the Maltster's respective website for great information in respect to the effect from the malt and very importantly the kind of percentage range of your grain bill that it is advised to be used within beer recipes. It's an awful lot easier than some people imagine. The same also applies to our crystal malt. This malt is available in many different forms which provide many types of colours, and in some markets like the US it is also known as caramel malt. In this example I have used a crystal malt that has a colour rating of 20 EBC. Within this recipe this has helped contribute to this beer's estimated colour rating of 8 EBC overall, meaning that this beer will be about the same colour as a Weiss beer in fact, just not as cloudy. If you are formulating a recipe using this template and are not in so much need of more colour, but you still want the head retention and some extra body, then you could simply use 5% of malted wheat instead, which in this case would have been similar to the colour in my example recipe, but the difference really is that the low EBC crystal will add in some nice caramel notes in the background too. 
Still on the topic of mashing our grain, I will also mention that I've used a very typical mash schedule for this example recipe. In vague but easy terms, you will also wish to experiment with mashing temperature due to the effects that it will have. Mashing can be performed at lower temperatures to create a more fermentable wort that is thinner, or higher temperatures to create a less fermentable wort that is thicker. These changes will have a direct effect on your beer starting specific gravity and final gravity. For much more information about mash temperatures, please consult one of my past videos as shown on screen now. After the mash, we then go into our sparge. This washes through the remaining starches left in the grain and tops up our volume ready for the boil. So that your recipes can be consistent, I recommend that you include this step which is important to maximise your mash efficiency. Brewing is not a game where a top score wins, it is about having consistent results. Let's now look at the boil. This recipe template can be used with any boil schedule with a small adaption. I am using the modern boil time of 30 minutes personally, so any start of the boil bittering hops will be added in my case at 30 minutes. However, if you would prefer to use a longer boil, then this first step can be simply changed into 60 minutes or more. It matters not. This template allows for three hop additions as you can see on screen. This schedule allows you to experience both good hop flavour and aroma without the need for a dry hop, but naturally do not be afraid of adding one if you wish to push forward aroma and flavour further. In my example recipe I am using nectar on hops as you can see, but naturally can be any hop or hop combination that you wish. All you need to do is simply select the hop or hops that you wish to use and using their alpha acid percentages within brewing software ensure for now at least that your hops have the weights worked out to give the exact same IBU levels as mine. For clarity, this means the equivalent of 7 IBU for your first hop for bittering, 22 IBU for your 15 minute flavour hops, and 7 IBU for your hop stand hops. 7, 22, 7, easy to remember too. If this is an area where you would like further guidance, then please check out the videos now shown on screen that will teach you this side and also everything you need to know about using brewing software, with a focus on Brewfather of course, though much of this will transfer onto other platforms too. I strongly suggest, at least to start with, that you find a single hop that you really like, that fits into your budget, that you can use for your all-grain testing before you change hops or add more than one. When scaling up to two hops, then I suggest that you add a new hop to the one that you used earlier for your testing. This way you can really understand this hop's contribution, which is certainly very useful when writing the recipes. You will also notice straight away the effect of the new hop and how it merges with the one that you already know. Here are the four vitals for my example recipe brewed using this template. You can see that the overall IBU for this recipe has a total of 37. This gives you an idea around the recipe's bitterness, but you cannot judge any beer recipe based on just this, as it is an incomplete picture without knowing the alcohol level, in fact. The grain bill that I have used for my example recipe at the ratios we discussed earlier allows this beer to have an ABV of 4.9%. The statistic that shows the ratio of both bitterness and our alcohol is known as BUGU, which is short for bittering units to gravity units as a ratio. For this recipe we have a BUGU of 0.81 as you can see. This essentially tells us how bitter the recipe is in balance with the alcohol. The Brewfather style template used here is for a pale ale, and you can see that Brewfather suggests a ratio for this style of between 0.64 and 0.06, so in this case this beer is under the medium level. If we were to just add more hops and increase the IBU then this ratio score would increase, showing that it is more bitter and we would get a reverse result if we would have increased the fermentables and increased the alcohol. Below the BUGU ratio is RBR, which is short for Relative Bitterness Ratio and also a very useful gauge for recipe writing. This is very similar to our BUGU ratio and both share the same purpose and work in a similar way with higher numbers meaning higher levels of bitterness. RBR, however, seeks to improve on the accuracy of BUGU by factoring in how much of your brewed sugars are eaten by your chosen yeast, which is known as attenuation. In this case, you can see that by factoring this in, RBR reports this recipe of having a ratio of 0.85, which predicts that this recipe for a parallel is having a medium bitterness, which is certainly not a bad place to be at all. 
I strongly suggest that you stick to these same levels for at least a while when using this recipe template for learning and discovery, before making changes, and when you do make a change, keep it to one change, despite the temptation to change more, as this really is the best route to learning. For further information, check online and you'll be able to find BUGU range charts like these that I'm showing on screen now. Naturally, all of this information is within Brewfather and some other beer recipe software, but it can be interesting and educational to see this kind of information in one place. Once you have good experience levels with this recipe template at this example recipe's BUGU range, then I would urge you to play with the alcohol and bitterness levels in your brewing software and try other levels. It has to be said though that when experimenting you will find less bitter and not so high alcohol levels easier to work with when brewing and testing and of course cheaper to brew. For my example recipe I'm using Ebergarden from Quake Yeastery. This offers really nice tropical fruit flavours that will pair nicely with the next Ron hops that I'm using. As a recipe writer, these are important considerations. I really like to use Quake yeast in general, not only because of the flavours, but also because it has a very short fermentation and conditioning time, which I have found especially useful with experimental batches because you can simply turn around recipe development and experimentation much, much quicker. When choosing yeast for this recipe template, you will find that this grain bill lends itself very well to whatever you would like to use with it. This means you can use neutral through to very flavourful yeast, lager or owl yeast, it really will not matter. However, I would suggest that for some people, some types of yeast are more natural to pair with certain types of hops. American hops, for example, would not lend themselves as well to Belgian yeast for many as they would with American or British yeast. Our taste buds do vary though, and I would encourage you at least at first to write your recipes with your own taste buds as the main consideration first. Writing for a more universal taste is certainly something you can graduate into with much more experience. It is also really good to build up long-term experience with one type of yeast when experimenting like this. Instead of changing the yeast when experimenting with this recipe template, I would urge you to add one more type of yeast to the one that you are used to using, which is known as co-fermentation. Co-fermentation is very common in commercial brewing, and when a brewery says they have in-house yeast, this usually means that they have taken two or perhaps more commercial yeast strains and they have combined them together into something multi-strain, just like native quake yeast in fact. For much more information about yeast co-fermentation, then check out my past content videos on screen. Certainly this is a very useful and interesting option to experiment with for brewers of all levels. I will now finish off this guide with some final tips. When experimenting like this, I would suggest that you brew the smallest batch size that your brewing system can accommodate. Firstly, because by producing less beer, you will have more space to brew more and continue your experimentation. Furthermore, brewing like this takes a fair bit less time and makes a brew much easier to fit into your schedule. This will allow you to experiment more and then learn faster. If your brewing system has a minimum batch size higher than you would like, then I would urge you to try my previous test batch method that I was using before I obtained the Brewzilla Gen 4 systems that both allow a 5 litre minimum batch size. This is based around a sous vide device, a pot and a mash bag, so nothing very expensive and you may already have these items. Also, because you will be repeating a lot of these ingredients, it is certainly worth buying at least your base malts and hops in bulk. Firstly, this means that all will be the same, which is important as malts vary from malt house to malt house, and it is the same with hops. All of these ingredients are also changing from crop to crop too, of course. On top of this, you should also enjoy some savings by buying in bulk. Furthermore, I would strongly suggest that you obtain your own grain mill of good quality so that you can be in full control of your grain crush and have good results. Using the same grain crush that works will also provide consistency. And lastly, once again, do resist the temptation to make more than one change in your recipe per brew. I know this will be very hard for some of you, but it really is the best way forward. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!